Um, uh, I welcome the contributions which have been made by deputies to the debate here this morning. Um, clearly, I don't share the sentiments of some, uh, but never, nevertheless, I appreciate them. Uh, as our national parliament, the Houses of the Oireachtas is the right and proper place for an informed and measured debate on our engagement with our partners and neighbours in Europe. There will be ample opportunity uh, both later today and over the period ahead to address in detail the issue of the new intergovernmental treaty and the forthcoming referendum. So I want to confine myself in these remarks to the European Council meeting itself uh, and the significant issues which it will address over the coming two days. This week's meeting of European leaders will address first and foremost economic policy. As a result of some recent positive developments, including the agreement on the second package for Greece, it will be such meeting for a considerable time to take place against a backdrop of calm. This is most encouraging. As I have said many times, Ireland's recovery depends on a return to stability and confidence. I do not believe that Europe is out of the woods yet. There are important decisions that remain to be taken, including on the strength of firewalls. I believe that collectively, we are, however, on the right track. The Spring European Council is the traditional opportunity for leaders to take stock of where we are in terms of economic policy in Europe. I'm very satisfied that due to the proactive steps which have been taken by this government, in concert with like-minded partners, we have ensured that the engagement which will take place this week is framed in a balanced and realistic manner. We have consistently highlighted that the solution to the economic and financial crisis cannot be delivered by fiscal consolidation alone. We have been at the forefront of those member states uh, that have put the case clearly and consistently that in order to move beyond crisis, Europe needs also to focus on concrete measures to support a return to sustainable job creation and economic growth. Without growth, and job-creating growth at that, the challenge of getting back on track would be hugely more difficult. It is the lever that will help us to lift the very real and substantial burdens uh, that we face. The two elements must happen side by side in Europe as they are at home here in Ireland. We are meeting the commitments of our programme on time and on, in full. This is now being recognised and acknowledged internationally, including by the financial markets. This improved perception of Ireland, which we have been working hard over the last uh, 12 months to develop, is not some kind of a vanity project or a beauty contest entered into for its own sake, because international reputation matters. As a small, open economy, dependent on trade, improved sentiment towards Ireland delivers real results in terms of restoring investor confidence, which reduces the cost of our borrowing, and in terms of attracting inward investment, which delivers growth and jobs in our cities, towns and villages. This week's meeting of the European Council will also agree on the EU's approach to a number of forthcoming international summit meetings. EU priorities will thus be agreed for the forthcoming G8 and G20 summits, taking place in May and June respectively. It is, of course, to be welcomed that a common EU approach is agreed for these meetings where Ireland is not a direct participant. Key principles will also be agreed for the EU's preparation for the UN Rio Plus 20 Conference on Sustainable Development, which will happen in mid-June. In the foreign policy sphere, as well as considering developments in the EU's southern neighbourhood, 12 months after the Arab Spring, the European Council will also address the developing situation in Syria. Last Friday, I attended the initial meeting of the Friends of Syria group in Tunis. I was struck there by the broad-based support within the international community for a resolution to this pressing situation. This is not a case of Europe or the West trying to dictate an outcome. In fact, I salute the leadership which the Arab, role, Arab League is playing. I look forward to strong European Council conclusions which reflect the urgency and gravity of the humanitarian crisis that President Assad's regime has inflicted upon its own people and which will add to the growing international political and economic pressure on that regime. Building on the Friends of the Syrian People meeting, the Council will call for an end to the violence, access to humanitarian aid and the start of a peaceful and inclusive transition. Finally, I want to express the Government's welcome for the agreement which was reached yesterday at the General Affairs Council to recommend that the European Council grant candidate status to Serbia. 
Ireland fully supports this decision and we look forward to its confirmation by the European Council on Friday. And I look forward to the outcome of this week's meeting of the European Council on the entire range of issues which it will consider and which the House, of course, will have an opportunity of returning to consider uh, after the Council meeting is concluded. Um, thank you, Thonish. So that brings the statements on the pre-European Council to a conclusion. And we move now to the ratification of the treaty statements. Um, and I call on the Thonish to, to do 15 minutes. Or oh, you have 15 minutes. It's not compulsory. Thank you, uh, Cahirlik. <coughs> this country has come a long way in the last 12 months. Through the hard work and sacrifice of the Irish people, we have re-established political and financial stability, and we have laid the foundations for economic recovery. The choice facing us now in the referendum on the European Stability Treaty is whether we build on what we have achieved or whether we go backwards. No one is trying to pretend that this treaty is the solution uh, is the entire solution to our problems or Europe's problems. But it is an important part of the solution. It is an essential building block in our economic recovery. Ireland is a small and very open economy. Our jobs and our living standards depend on what we make and sell to others. Our prosperity depends on the stability and prosperity of others, and in particular, the stability and prosperity of the Euro countries. The Euro is not an abstract concept. It is the very money in our pockets. It is a simple fact that what is good for stability in Europe is good for us. Twelve months ago, Ireland was stuck in a profound economic and political crisis. This government has taken a grip of that problem. We have brought about far greater stability. We have worked hard to restore Ireland's reputation abroad, and we are succeeding. But to move forward now, we need the instability in the Euro area to come to an end. Time and again, as Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, I see that what is holding back confidence in Ireland and investment in Ireland is not so much uncertainty about Ireland, but uncertainty about Europe. Uncertainty about the Euro. We've had to, we have to get past that problem, and this treaty is an essential part of achieving that objective. It is fair to say that, looked at from the outside, Europe as a whole has often seemed to be slow in responding to the crisis. There is some truth in that analysis. Europe has been deeply affected by the crisis of recent years, with institutions and leaders having to navigate through uncharted waters. But it is also true to say that a lot more has been achieved than is often appreciated and that we are now making tangible progress. When the crisis broke, Europe simply lacked the tools it needed to deal with an unprecedented set of circumstances. Step by step, it has put a response in place. It has moved to address the immediate crisis and learning lessons as events unfolded. It was improvising when the first package of support for Greece was put in place, but it has since put in place the temporary mechanism, the EFSF, under which Ireland has drawn down some of its funding. And building on the experience since, a permanent mechanism, the ESM, will come into being in the middle of this year. The Union has also taken steps to strengthen the rules on which economic uh, or, or monetary union is built. The end of last year, six legislative measures were adopted and another two are currently in the pipeline with a shared commitment to their early adoption. Taken together, these measures enhance our capacity to see what is really happening in each other's economies. For example, it will now be easier to spot the imbalances, the property bubble and the over-reliance on sustainable taxes that contributed to Ireland's downfall. They enhance our ability to enforce the rules, ensuring that all member states, big and small, live up to the responsibilities that come with a shared currency. In the European semester and Europe 2020 processes, Ireland now has systems in place to ensure that the structural reforms vital to a sustainable return to growth are delivered. These will be at the heart of the discussions that will take place at the European Council tomorrow and on Friday. Throughout, Ireland has strongly supported this work as vital to our national recovery and uh, investment in our future. The Stability Treaty is another part of the solution 
that Europe is putting in place. The new treaty has to be seen as a part, an important part, of this overall picture. It responds in particular to a desire on the part of the countries of the Euro area to deepen their commitments to each other in recognition of the responsibilities and obligations they share. It is a signal to the wider world that the problems that have undermined confidence in the currency cannot be repeated and that the necessary lessons have been learned. It is simple logic that if you are asking people to fix a problem, part of that is making sure that the same mistakes that created it don't happen again. Other elements of the picture are the measures that the ECB is taking to provide liquidity to the European banking system and the new firewalls that have been put in place to protect countries from the effects of contagion in financial markets. Financial discipline is part of the solution, but so too is growth. As a government, we have also pressed consistently and hard for the drive for discipline and reform to be matched by an equal commitment to growth and job creation. We have argued that any other approach is lopsided and is doomed to fail. It is clear that this analysis is being taken on board. The government is working with like-minded colleagues to drive the agenda forward. At the end of January, the European Council identified priority areas for action. Tomorrow's meeting will build on this, and in June, the European Council will return to the matter again to ensure that commitments made are being honoured. And the Taoiseach and I have engaged with our colleagues, and we're helping to shape the agenda in Europe. Things are moving forward, and the work of repair is underway. What will it mean for Ireland to ratify the treaty? In a narrow sense, it will commit us to implementing budgetary rules and procedures to which we are already substantially committed. But voting for the treaty also has far wider implications. It will send a message to our partners that we recognise and accept the fact, and it is a fact, that our faiths are and will continue to be locked together. We are ready to shoulder the responsibility that this brings. It will send a message to those looking to invest in Ireland that we are deeply serious about restoring the stability and security of our currency helping to ensure the certainty that investors look for before they can commit their money with confidence. It will enable us to hold our partners to account in a way that has not been possible before. The larger member states in particular will no longer be able to use their weight to escape the rigours that they apply to others. It also puts in place a set of rules about how future governments will manage the public finances. Of course, government was already committed to this approach, whether or not our partners in Europe were minded to do, to do also. We are also committed to a fiscal responsibility bill containing many of the provisions now set out in the new treaty. As a small open economy, we have to learn the lessons of this crisis and ensure in the future that our national finances can endure the buffeting of shifts and changes in the global economy. Ratification of the treaty will also mean that Ireland will continue to have access to emergency funding under the ESM should it ever be required in the future. We have made it plain our determination to exit the EU IMF programme of support as quickly as we can and without resort to the ESM. And that remains the government's steadfast intention. But we should also recognise that having the ESM available as a backstop is a sensible and prudent precaution that will further enhance international confidence in Ireland. I have absolutely no doubt that there will be some people who will seek to distort the truth about this treaty for their own ends. They're already doing so. We've heard some of it here earlier today. I believe that the Irish people will see beyond such self-interested arguments and will recognise the treaty for what it is as part of a package of measures at national and European level which are aimed to restore stability, underpin confidence and to support a return to growth and job creation. It is absolutely in our national interest to ratify it as a step towards a more secure and more sustainable future. In seeking that support, we are asking the people to cast their vote for economic and financial stability. In the end, this treaty is about providing a foundation of stability on which we can build a sustainable and real economic recovery. As I said to the House yesterday, this government was elected to office in the face 
of the most grave political, economic and financial crisis that the country has ever faced. Before that, the Irish people had looked on in horror as the economy went into a nosedive and as the economic crisis was followed by a political crisis. In the last year, this government has taken a grip of the problem and we have been successful in restoring stability. Political stability, economic stability and financial stability. We have worked diligently in the slow and painstaking task of restoring our reputation as a country and our standing among the member states of the European Union. Our efforts have been widely recognised and they are showing results. As a country, we are making progress together, step by step. Our cost of borrowing has fallen. We have improved the terms of our EU IMF programme, saving this country €10 billion Euro in interest payments. We are once again, as we were in the past, held in high regard internationally. Our credibility is being re-established. Confidence in Ireland is growing. Investment in, is returning and with it jobs, as we have seen in the jobs announcement over the past number of weeks. We know where we are going and we have shown that we have what it takes to get there. Thanks to the hard work and sacrifice of the Irish people, we are now in a far better position than we were a year ago. What we have to do now is to build on that stability to achieve economic recovery, to create jobs and to make existing jobs more secure. But we cannot take that stability for granted. And we must also recognise that we can only do so, that we can only do so much for ourselves. We are part of the Euro Currency Union. For Ireland to succeed, Europe must also succeed. For there be, to be stability in Ireland, we also need stability in the Euro area. People should not listen to those who try to make cynical use of the debate to advance narrow partisan interests to the detriment of the interests of the Irish people. The situation is too serious and the issues involved are too important. In the face of the worst crisis we have weathered together, the Irish people have shown their mettle. In doing so, they have gained the respect and confidence of our partners in Europe and beyond. We now have an important opportunity to take a decision that will help to secure all that we have worked hard to achieve, a positive step towards our national recovery a vote of confidence in our capacity to recover and to regain control of our own affairs. As I have said, I look forward to a full and respectful debate, to a clear and positive outcome and to moving forward together. Thank you.